How long will an amateur cyclist keep up with a pro peloton breakaway in a Vuelta stage? That's what you'll find out in this video. Pancake flat sprint stage again. Breda, it starts in Breda. It finishes in 193k. We've got Melier, Bennett, Groves, Cocard, Ackerman. Decent sprint field. No crosswinds of note. One categorized climb where Julius Vandenberg, who's Dutch, his name literally means hill, I think, would be getting the breakaway. Once again, you see him there in the polka dot jersey trying to defend that. He would do so. Trek pacing for Pedersen and Bora pacing as well today for Bennett. And here we have our man of the hour. Maybe some guerrilla marketing. Got a lovely bike path on the right-hand side. And I timed it. It was almost exactly two minutes to the breakaway. Maybe there's a little left to right crosswind. You see the way the break was fanned out. Thomas de Gent was in there as well. I don't know, but he did a pretty good job. You see he shifts from the hoods to the handlebars about two-thirds the way through the effort. He goes through that little dip, and yeah, he did a pretty good job. Two minutes alongside them, but eventually they're just too fast, and he blows up on the right-hand side, and he looks a bit like Mark Hirschi, actually. I don't know, but anyway, good two-minute little interval for him. We'll see during the race if anyone can do better. That was the main excitement during the start of this stage, and we we're coming in for the sprint in a technical sort of run-in, Yumbo Visma, I mean, A3Ks to go to get break was still at two minutes but Jumbo Visma were trying to a bit more proactive today in keeping uh, Primoz Roglic and Sepp Kuh safe and as I said Valverde wasn't happy with this parkour afterwards this Burgos rider not under 20 k's to go yet puts his hand up he wants something from the car so the Burgos car is going to be called up from the back and there's this abomination of a left hand corner with furniture everywhere here and so there's a little low speed fortunately uh, but there's a crash, and the people involved, as you can see from the bronze, not gold bike, is Richard Carapaz on the right-hand side. I think Sivakov and Rodriguez, too. And so that's Ineos, or just about all their GC, their main GC contenders caught up in that. The breakaway is now at 30 seconds. We're under 20 k's to go. The sprint sort of lead out to the beginning, and a very hairy moment when the Burgos car, which was called up, uh, presumably to give assistance to that rider, scoots through, and the Ineos rider... I think it's Sivakov must be, he ducks out and he's looking in the eyes of the driver like, have you seen me? Probably a moment of fear there. Fortunately, nothing bad happened. Alpsen car coming through too. The Ineos riders would get back on. Mike Woods abandoned the race, unfortunately, after a crash today. And it was Alpsen, under 10 k's to go. They don't have Ricard, Krieger, or Dries de Bond for Tim Mollier, who's seen the Belgian national champs bands there. They have Tamino, though, who finished this fairly late. Turnison, who went for the sprint yesterday to get the red jersey, he was on keeping Roglic safe duties, as well as Eduardo Affini, who's on the front. They both did a really good job. Bahrain on the right-hand side. And Quickstep and Ineos, not at the front like they were yesterday. Maybe the crash affected Ineos, and Turner had to do work to bring Sivakov and Carapaz and Rodriguez back. But 2.5 k's to go. It's Afini kind of on his last legs, still in the front, and none of the other sprint teams or leadouts have really moved up. Alps and Phoenix like, well, if you're going to keep pulling, we can save our legs. A lot of them have only got like one or two riders for Bullens. Bora have a split team for GC, as I said yesterday. They don't have seven men like an FDJ train for Demar. They've only got Mullen, Koch, and uh, Van Poppel, and I think it's just Mullen and uh, Van Poppel there now. And Alpsen, you see on the left-hand side, they're like, all right, Time to start moving up. But even then, it's probably a little bit too early. They move up on the left-hand side. Rolich and Co. will shuffle backwards. And Bike Exchange make a move on the right for Caden Groves. They don't have a last man like a Mez gets, but they do have a reasonably strong setup train. But this was a really, really messy sprint. 1,400 meters to go. Everyone seemed to get detached from their sprinter, including Mullen. But Van Poppel didn't get detached from Bennett. But like Mullen was on his own. I think Milano was in front of Ackerman, but he's uh, Oliveira was split up. Uh, Tamino or Alperson were detached from Merlier. Groves got shuffled back in a corner badly again with about 850 meters to go. So it wasn't the cleanest of sprints or textbook sprints. Fortunately, no crash. And you see Mullen looking back here through this corner he's looking back he's like i do not have danny van poppel on my wheel he holds the uae rider's wheel and then he launches and he stops and this is curious i don't think he was done at that point and i think he realized why would i take ackerman and molano deep into this finish when van poppel and bennett are 10th wheel and we've got like 700 meters to go and that's going to make it harder for them to move up so he astutely 
pulls off early. That forces Milano to begin his lead out early, which is critical. You'll see in a second, because look where Van Poppel and Bennett are deep. They're like 10th wheel, as I said. And Ackerman, he's in decent enough shape, but he has to hit the wind just five seconds too early. And Mullen, if he'd pulled for five seconds longer... Maybe Ackerman wins this sprint. Maybe someone else wins this sprint. Maybe Bennett doesn't win because when Van Poppel launches, it's with 20 seconds left in the sprint, very similar to yesterday. He does basically a sprint himself just to a finish line that's 125 meters earlier. And you'll see with the counter on the right-hand side how late this is. And you see, Milano pulled off. Van Poppel is still sprinting till about now. When Bennett off camera comes out of his wheel, he does about a 12 second, 11 second sprint, Sam Bennett. And but Ackerman had already been in the wind for five or so seconds too long because of Milano being forced through too early. 20 second sprint, Bennett does the business. Put this little anecdote clip up on Twitter if you want to follow me there. But yeah, just great work from Van Poppel. Smart work from Mullen, not to make a potentially bad situation worse. Bennett, you see here, he comes out of Van Poppel's wheel. Before Van Poppel decelerates, he uses that momentum. Uh, Pedersen, I mean, eventually chooses life, but he was trying to shoot into that gap between McClay and Bennett, gets his wheel the wrong side. That was his mistake here, and it just cost him maybe half a pedal stroke, lose a bit of momentum, and then he has to get his wheel to the left-hand side of Bennett, come out of his wheel, and then Van Poppel's moving over the right, or maybe it's just an illusion because of the way the barriers are going. I don't know, but Pedersen maybe could have got closer. But yeah, he tried to shoot that, that gap on the right of Bennett. Probably should have just drafted Bennett and tried to come out of his wheel late. But Bennett wins again, Pet ahead of Pedersen. McClay third, Cockhard, then Leinhardt, Merlier, Groves, Bullens, Ackerman, and Van Poppel. Disappointment particularly for Merlier, Groves, and Ackerman. Here's what Bennett had to say after the stage. It was quite hard because I think a lot of people were fighting for our wheel. And uh, I think it's just a natural flow that people start to kind of go up beside me and squeeze me off. So I had uh, a few tough moments just to hold my, my man's wheel. Uh, my wheel, so or like Danny's wheel. So it's quite a hard fight, and uh, yeah, the the boys again. What can I say? You know, like John is riding all day. Like big thank you for the commitment. The boys then looking after me in the bunch all day, getting me bottles when it was hard. Like today was, it wasn't like a hard, like watts wise, but it was a lot of accelerations out of corners all the day and really nervous day. Um, but yeah, the, again, the job they did in the final. Uh, Jonas, even though he was riding all day, came back and did another big turn. Ryan kept us up there, taking so much wind, and then Danny was a, was a master class. Eduardo Fini finished ahead at Turnison, so he takes the red jersey. Jumbo Visma sharing it around. He keeps that. It was a travel day tomorrow. I probably won't post anything tomorrow because I'll have an asleep. Hashtag some days off, and I'll see you with a stage four recap on Tuesday. Ciao.